last time we stopped at <coughs> uh, discussing uh, dif uh, diffusion and drift current in semiconductors <coughs> for electrons and holes. And um, I mentioned that drift and dif diffusion processes are not completely uh, independent from each other. So there definitely should be some relationship between mobility and diffusion coefficient. So today we want to um, derive this relationship, which is called Einstein relationship, um, and show that indeed there is a relationship which is quite uh, useful, and we will use it in future in order to um, derive other uh, equations. So uh, if we consider some semiconductor with non-uniformity, there we will have uh, non-uniform elect uh, electric field, like uh, this non-uniformity induces electric field inside semiconductor, and there will be also some um, gradient of concentration. So both of them will cause uh, drift and diffusion currents, and under equilibrium condition, they will compensate each other. So uh, in general, we can write that um, total current is as a sum of uh, electron and whole current density um, will be equal to zero. <clears throat> so let us consider in particular electron uh, current and let's say electron transport because uh, we have both contributions to this tra transport from the side of drift uh, and uh, um, diffusion components. So for electrons, we can write that Q times Nx, so concentration of electrons as a function of position, times mu n mobility of electrons, times Ex as a function of position, uh, should be let we can write like this. We can add here another contribution from diffusion uh, current. Uh, Q times dN, diffusion coefficient for electrons. And um, here, first derivative of electron concentration over position. So eventually, this should be equal to zero because they should compensate each other. Uh, So at um, some coordinate, let's consider some coordinate x equals 0. Uh, we should have equilibrium condition. So that will be n at 0 position should be equal to n naught. Uh, this is equilibrium charge carrier concentration in this semiconductor. And we know how we can express it. So n naught will be equal to nc times exponent minus ec minus Fermi energy divided by kt. So that stands for equilibrium charge carrier concentration at given temperature. So uh, taking this uh, into account, uh, we can express um, the solution of this differential equation uh, here um, in the following form. So it will be n as a function of x. That's our goal to find this um, dependence of electron concentration um, versus uh, position will be equal as n naught this equilibrium charge carrier concentration um, times exponent minus mu n times e x as a function of x divided by d n diffusion coefficient times x. <coughs> so we have now expression of this uh, charge carrier concentration based on the um, 
equilibrium condition when drift and um, diffusion uh, current compensate each other. Now, in order to proceed further, we need to consider how this uh, concentration of electrons as a function of position will uh, depend um, how it can be expressed in a different way. So, if we place some um, semiconductor in um, electric field, so if there is some electric field inside semiconductor, um, it will obviously cause some, uh, like provide some potential energy for electrons. And uh, this potential energy, taking into account this negative charge of electrons, um, is uh, equal to minus Q times phi, which is, this phi is electrostatic uh, potential. And we also know that there is a relationship between electric field uh, and uh, change of electrostatic potential. So it's minus d uh, phi over dx. Uh, taking this into account, we need to uh, reconsider again um, concentration of equilibrium charge carriers and it's a function of x. Um, so we use this equation, but a bit modified. So here it is uh, condition when x is equal to zero and uh, potential is also equal, electrostatic potential is also equal to zero. However, if we want to uh, get um, distribution of charge carry concentration as a function of x, <coughs> we need to, uh, in the scope of, of this equation, uh, we need to um, consider also this additional potential energy which electron gains uh, because of presence of electrostatic field. So that will be NC uh, times exponent. Here will be energy of the like, bottom of the conduction band EC plus this potential energy which electron gains in electrostatic field minus Fermi energy divided by KT. <coughs> so we uh, can actually write it in a bit different form. So it will be NC exponent minus EC minus EF over KT. So that is nothing else as our equilibrium concentration and not at position X not uh, times this exponent minus potential energy in electrostatic field times KT. <coughs> so let us write here just N naught instead of uh, this first term. Um, and uh, uh, here instead of second term, um, we can uh, write, like substitute this instead of um, potential energy, so it will be um, exponent Q times phi divided by KT. And if we want to express it in terms of electric field, EX, so taking into account this relationship between uh, electric field and change of uh, potential, uh, we can write that it is equal to and not times exponent minus Q times EX as a function of X divided by KT times position X. So we have two equations which describe concentration of electrons as a function of coordinate X. So first equation um, is uh, here which was obtained based on the equilibrium between drift and diffusion uh, current. And second equation we have here, which is based on the um, additional component to energy of electrons, which they gain in um, uh, electrostatic, uh, electric, electrostatic field. So now we see that they are kind of very similar. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the difference is only in the um, 
arguments of the exponent uh, function. So since uh, this pre-exponent coefficient is the same and they describe the same uh, parameter, means that these arguments of exponent functions, functions should be equal to each other. So let us um, write it down so we can go to next slide here. And uh, here is the first argument of the exponent uh, mobility of electrons times electric field as a function of x times x divided by diffusion coefficient uh, of electrons. And that is equal to q times ex as a function of x times x divided by kt. So these guys, so this is uh, first argument, uh, this is uh, argument of the exponent in the second equation. So here we can cancel out this electric field times position and for electrons we get this Einstein relationship is mu n divided by dn um, mobility of electrons divided by uh, diffusion coefficient of electrons this is equal to uh, q divided by kt so it has quite uh, straightforward and uh, simple relationship between uh, these two parameters. Uh, obviously for holes we can write uh, similarly it will be mu p divided by dp is equal to q divided by kt. <coughs> so these are Einstein oops, relationships for uh, electrons and holes you should remember them because this is one of the key um, feature which uh, should be quite often used in derivation of other equations. And uh, um, the thing is here that this is applicable only for non-degenerated semiconductors where we can use this uh, like Boltzmann uh, distribution for charge carrier concentration. So we can um, non-degenerated semiconductor means that uh, Fermi energy is not located too close to uh, bottom of the conduction band when we are talking about N-type semiconductor uh, or top of valence band when we are talking about um, uh, P-type semiconductor. So uh, too close means something in the range of 3 kT. So there is a gap between bottom of the conduction band or top of the valence band and Fermi energy uh, level uh, larger than 3 kT. So obviously this is kT. Uh, it's a temperature dependent parameter. So at different temperatures it will be uh, different. <coughs> so now we can proceed further. And actually, already based on what we know about charge transfer in um, semiconductors, we can introduce one of the uh, most important uh, equations, which defines um, the relationship between charge uh, transfer and recombination processes. Um, and uh, this is so-called continuity equation. <coughs> so let us consider such a sample, semiconductor sample. With one edge, so here will be our axis X. One edge of this semiconductor is at coordinate X. Another will be at x plus delta x. <coughs> so, uh, the cross-section um, area of this sample will be A. And here we have some current. Let us consider electron uh, current. Uh, density Jn 
as a function of position x. Uh, so that is current uh, which uh, is going inside this volume of semiconductor. Also, we have some current, let's call it Jn at x plus delta x, which comes out from the semiconductor. So, let us assume that at some moment of time, there is some fluctuation of current. Um, what does it mean? That it just something happened inside this semiconductor, and uh, uh, you would initially expect that, uh, bless you, uh, that um, current doesn't change, current density doesn't change at coordinate, so it should be the same. But let us assume that some, some fluctuation happened, and in some moment of time, j n at x plus delta x became larger than j n at position x. So what that will mean? Any suggestions? So looking at this, if we have something what comes inside the semiconductor is uh, as small as this flux of, of charged F of electrons in our case, is smaller than the flux which is coming out. Uh, obviously that the concentration of charge uh, carriers uh, inside the semiconductor should reduce because we kind of take more than we put in. And that comes from this uh, fundamental law of conservation of electrical charge. So um, there should be such, uh, in this particular case, um, we will observe some decrease of concentration of charge carriers inside this volume of semiconductor. So how we can um, write it? So uh, taking into account this uh, law of conservation of electrical charge, we can write that minus um, A divided by Q times Jn, like difference in current, x plus delta x minus Jn x, so here this minus stands for uh, negative charge of electron, should be equal uh, to the reduction of uh, charge carrier concentration, um, like to actually to reduction of uh, total uh, charge carriers uh, in available in this um, volume of semiconductor. So it will be minus um, A is cross-section area times delta X. That will be volume of this semiconductor. And um, here will be dn naught divided by dt. So it's uh, a change um, of a charge carrier concentration during some interval like, of time. <clears throat> so first, uh, derivative of charge carrier concentration over time. So we have a... Um, uh, relationship between uh, change of um, current in, as a function of position and change of electrons or charge concentration as a function of time. So, assuming that this delta x, the length of the semiconductor, is small, uh, we can write that Jn at x plus delta x can be represented as Jn x plus um, first derivative of Jn over um, x times delta x. So now let us substitute instead of this Jx plus delta x this expression. So we will have, uh, also we can cancel out this uh, area, or the cross-section area. So 
when we substitute it here, it will be j n uh, maybe minus one over q j n x plus first derivative of j n over d x uh, times delta x n minus j n delta x. Uh, sorry, not delta x, but x. This will be equal to minus delta x dn naught over dt. Uh, here we cancel these guys and eventually we can write that um, first derivative of electron current over position x will be equal to q times d n not over dt. So we have the relationship between uh, change of um, electric current as a function of x uh, position and change of uh, concentration of charge carriers in time. So that is important um, relationship. Um, this is written for electrons. Obviously, we can write similar for uh, holes. So we can write for holes also A divided by Q. Now we don't have minus because uh, charge for holes is positive. J P X plus delta X minus J P delta X is equal to um, minus a delta x dp over dt. And uh, here in this, on the right side, we have minus because uh, we know that concentration is um, reducing. So this derivative over time will be negative. So that is true for both electrons and holes. So in this case, uh, we can also write this relationship between the first derivative of electron current or position x equal to minus d p over dt. So taking this into account, we can combine both electrons and um, holes um, like equations for electrons and holes and can write some general equation which will look like this. First derivative of total current J or dx uh, plus uh, here will be derivative d rho over dt equals to zero. So here J is the sum of electron and hole current uh, and this rho is the density of electric charge. So to be more specific this is uh, Q times uh, P minus N. So this is space charge of uh, uncompensated uh, charge carriers in uh, it's either electrons or holes. If we have more holes that will be positive um, rho. If we have more electrons there will be negative uh, space charge. So um, now we have this equation which is so-called continuity equation and gives us the um, <coughs> relationship between um, change of uh, electric current versus position and concentration of charge carriers versus um, time. So this is very important because in the um, future we will use this continuity equation to derive um, expressions like for instance for current voltage characteristic uh, of uh, PN junction um, and uh, these two processes are uh, 
change of current versus position and change of concentration of electrons versus time, they are very relevant uh, because um, we, uh, by combining them in this continuity equation, we can describe uh, charge transport and recombination in uh, semiconductor samples or semiconductor devices. So, and obviously, in the basement of this continuity equation, we have the law of conservation of electric um, charge. So now, let us assume, let's try to... Uh, apply this um, uh, continuity equation and let us assume such a uh, case. Um, in particular, it will be deviation of uh, from some electrical neutrality condition. So if we have a semiconductor and there is some deviation of electrical neutrality, obviously there will be formed some electric field. Uh, electrostatic field and the uh, parameters of this electrostatic field will be determined by the um, space uh, charge which is formed is how, how f far we went from the uh, e electrical equilibrium condition. So there is so-called uh, Poisson equation. I'm sure you heard about it from electrodynamics course. And uh, the derivative, first derivative of electric field over uh, position uh, in the case of uh, this field being formed by space charge uh, will be equal to, uh, actually no, um, it will be equal to the density of space charge rho divided by epsilon epsilon naught. So epsilon naught is permittivity of free space and uh, uh, epsilon is the electric constant of the medium where this deviation from um, equilibrium, electrostatic equilibrium condition has happened. So this is Poisson's uh, law. <coughs> so now, if we consider um, continuity equation, let me write it down here again. So we have dj over dx plus d rho over d t equals to zero. And uh, also consider the um, Ohm's law in differential form. So J electric current density is equal to sigma times electric field. So <coughs> uh, from here we can determine that first derivative of current density over position will be equal to sigma times d e over d x. So if we assume a single dimension case, we can just put here uh, x. So electric field is oriented in uh, one dimension x. So now we can substitute instead of this derivative expression of uh, dj over dx. So it will be sigma uh, oops, times dex over dx uh, plus um, this d rho over dt. Um, from here, let us express d rho over dt equals minus sigma dex over dt, uh, over d, dx. So, we know that this first derivative, dex over dx, will be equal to rho divided by epsilon epsilon naught. That comes from this Poisson's equation, which I mentioned earlier. So we can um, write here that it will be equal to uh, minus sigma times rho divided by epsilon epsilon naught. Now we rearrange variables. We get the following differential equation. d rho over 
rho is equal to minus sigma divided by epsilon epsilon naught uh, times dt. So now we have this uh, relationship and uh, you already may see that what we want to do, we want to find the relationship between this excessive uh, electric charge, space charge rho, um, as a function of, of time. We want to know for how long this deviation from electrical neutrality in semiconductor can exist. Uh, because obviously we need to come back to electro neutrality condition, uh, even if we have some disturbance, some fluctuation. So taking this into account and uh, <clears throat> considering so this differential equation um, and considering boundary conditions for uh, t equals to zero, we have rho, which is rho at time zero. So it's initial moment when we create this deviation from electrical neutrality. And t equals to infinity, um, then this rho should be equal. Any suggestions what could should be it equal? So we to zero, yeah, obviously, because uh, if we create some excessive electric charge, space charge, it will be screened by other um, charge carriers uh, over some time, which we want to figure out uh, which time it will be. And obviously, in some time interval, which is less than infinity, um, it will come to zero. So we will come back to uh, electrical neutrality condition. So taking this. Um, a boundary condition, this simple differential equation, uh, we can solve it rho as a function of time. It will be rho initial at zero moment of time times exponent uh, minus time t divided by tau m. So this tau m is so called Maxwell relaxation time and that will be equal to epsilon epsilon naught divided by sigma. <coughs> so what is the physical meaning of this um, Maxwell relaxation time? So we can substitute instead of t tau m um, and then it will be exponent in the power of minus one. So obviously it will be some time interval during which the excessive uh, space charge, which is our deviation from electro um, neutral condition, uh, will uh, reduce by um, E, uh, this Euler's number times. So that is on average considered that this charge is kind of vanished. Um, already. <clears throat> so that is uh, Maxwell relaxation time stands for time which is required for environment because this time is a property of environment to compensate to screen the excessive um, charge which causes this deviation from electrical neutrality condition. And uh, mm, you see that this time is indeed parameter of the environment because here we have, besides this epsilon naught, which is a fundamental constant, we have epsilon, which is uh, the electric constant, so obviously it will depend on the electric um, constant, and also uh, we have sigma. So this time will be larger in materials with larger the electric constant because this electric field cost created by um, excessive bulk uh, as like space charge will be smaller so it will has less uh, impact on the environment uh, so that's why here we have epsilon in the numerator and in the denominator we have sigma which is electric specific electrical conductivity obviously the more conductive material the easier it will be to screen this excessive um, charge, uh, the space charge, and that's why with increase of electrical conductivity, 
um, the relaxation, Maxwell relaxation time will decrease. So the faster these um, charge carriers can um, compensate excessive non-equilibrium, like excessive not compensated um, space charge. So taking, taking into account that the electric constant of majority of commonly used semiconductors is about 10, and specific um, electrical conductivity is something 10 to minus 1 um, ohm minus 1 uh, meter minus 1, and then we can calculate that common um, value for this Maxwell relaxation time uh, tau m is something about 10 to minus 9 seconds. So 10, uh, <clears throat> it's like 1 nanosecond is a common uh, value for Maxwell relaxation time in uh, semiconductors which are commonly used in semiconductor devices. So this one uh, parameter, one thing I would like to underline here, I'm sure you heard about Maxwell displacement currents which are associated with polarization effects in semiconductors. So those are the origin of dielectric, um, like the origin of geometric capacitance of, of materials uh, because it's associated with um, uh, Maxwell displacement currents. Um, so it is Knowing that for uh, all materials, uh, frequency dependence of the electric constant of these materials um, starts to be observed only at uh, frequencies nu, um, something comparable to 1 over tau m. So um, this relaxation, maximal relaxation time, uh, to be more specific, uh, one over this um, maximum relaxation time defines the frequency at which the electric constant of the material we are talking about semiconductors start to depend on frequencies if fre if uh, frequency of the um, signal uh, which is applied to this uh, sample if frequency of this signal is less um, then um, the electric constant can be considered as constant. So that, that frequency will correspond to 1 gigahertz, assuming that common value for um, maximum relaxation time is 10 to minus 9 seconds. Uh, so why it is important? Uh, we know that the electric constant uh, is a function of frequency. From optics, we learned that uh, refractive index, which is a uh, parameter re directly related to the electric constant, um, depends on frequency because we see this dispersion of light. So for different valences, we have different refractive index, and that's why we can split in the prism um, a light, white light into this uh, rainbow um, colorful uh, picture. So. Uh, that is true because frequencies there are obviously much higher than this gigahertz. And uh, there we should consider um, that uh, the scale of the time scale of processes which are happening are much shorter than the relaxation, maximum relaxation time. So we need to take into account this dependence of the electric constant. However, in semiconductor devices and semiconductor materials, the Recombination processes, for instance, they happen in the time scale of something about one microsecond, 10 to minus six seconds, so which is three orders of magnitude smaller, uh, <coughs> like in, in time scale larger than, than uh, Maxwell displacement, uh, Maxwell re uh, relaxation time. So that means that all processes which are happening in terms of charge transport and charge recombination in semiconductors and semiconductor devices should be um, considered in the frame of the uh, model which con uh, takes um, the dielectric constant as frequency independent parameter. 
So epsilon should remain as frequency independent parameter. Um, there are many papers where people report some the electric constant within frequency range uh, from one hertz to one megahertz and show um, insane frequency dependence when it goes from two or three to 100 and uh, um, describe it as uh, frequency dependence of the electric constant. But um, coming back to these first principles, um, we understand that it indeed it's not the electric constant of the material, it's just the uh, side effect of some parasitic processes which are happening in this material. For instance, some iron um, migration, uh, like the diffusion when you apply this AC signal to the uh, semiconductor. And uh, uh, that is uh, the main reason for such values which you get. But indeed, the geometric capacitance originated from um, display, Maxwell displacement current is um, frequency independent for semiconductors up to frequencies about 1 gigahertz, which is defined by this value of uh, Maxwell displacement, uh, Maxwell um, uh, yes, Maxwell relaxation time. And that is important to highlight because um, further we will also discuss uh, uh, capacitance, like barrier capacitance of PN junction. We will discuss specifically how, um, since it's an important parameter, how to correctly measure it. Um, we need to um, understand that this geometric capacitance of the PN junction um, will be uh, frequency independent uh, if we are considering only geometric capacitance and not some other, other uh, processes there. <coughs> But that actually comes from these first principles. So now I would like to continue this. I this. Have a yes, so sure. Here, uh, the relation between, I mean, uh, that time relaxation, maximum time relaxation is uh, inverse relation between conductivity. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. here, time relaxation, uh, maximum time relaxation is also depends on frequency. So what's the relation between frequency and conductivity? Is conductivity oh, so here it just, it's not a relationship, it's just uh, um, the definition. So you, here I want to show the um, range of frequencies which will be associated to this time constant. And since frequency is 1 over t period of time, so we, instead of period of time we just put this uh, um, Maxwell uh, uh, time and uh, um, we get the range, like just some estimate the value of frequencies at which this um, dependence of um, the electric constant on frequencies should start to be apparent. So it's not really the, the uh, some functional dependence. <coughs> so now we want to discuss diffusion of majority charge carriers in semiconductor. Uh, since we um, now already know diffusion drift, uh, Maxwell relaxation time, uh, we can analyze this uh, process and that is actually like pre-step to um, some uh, devices because that's where we operate with charge transport um, diffusion of majority or minority charge carriers. So when we discuss uh, PN junction, uh, we will come back and reconsider diffusion of minority charge carriers. But obviously, first, it is um, important to understand what is happening when we have diffusion of uh, majority charge carriers in semiconductor. So let us assume that we have a semiconductor with some here axis X. Um, here will be X equals zero. And at X, oops, at coordinate um, X less than zero, so here, we will have some uh, excessive majority charge carrier concentration. 
so it will be n naught plus delta n. And here at x larger than zero, we have just n naught, we have equilibrium condition. We assume that delta n is much smaller than n naught, <clears throat> but at some moment of time, let's consider why it's moving so much, uh, t equals to zero, we create this um, excessive um, electrons, um, delta uh, n, in the left part of the semiconductor. So, obviously, they will start to diffuse, because we have some gradient of concentration. They start to diffuse into this uh, not dashed part, like right part of the semiconductor, um, and uh, um, we will have some diffusion current. Uh, this diffusion, uh, like transport of charge carriers in electrically neutral region, will cause deviation from electrical neutrality, and uh, some internal electric field will be created. Um, it will be directed in that way that it will prevent further diffusion of charge carriers, and uh, um, we will get some um, kind of equilibrium condition eventually when diffusion current and drift current will be compensated. So we can write that Q times dn, here d delta n as a function of x over d uh, x plus Q n naught times mu n times E um, electric field as a function of x, which is induced because of this um, diffusion, this will be equal to zero. Here we use n naught because we mentioned that delta n is much smaller than n naught, so it will not change much of the concentration of majority charge carriers. So in terms of consideration of drift current, we can operate just with n naught. So from here, we can um, write that Q dn uh, d delta n over x over d, dx will be equal to minus uh, this Q n naught times mu n e as a function of x. Uh, so here we can cancel out this Q and uh, um, express um, electric field as a function of position x. That will be minus dn divided by n naught mu naught and times this derivative d delta n as a function of x over dx. Now, <clears throat> we remember the, uh, so it's mu n, um, Einstein relationship which we derived at the beginning of our uh, lecture. And uh, that, based on that, we can write that dn, diffusion coefficient, divided by mu n, should be equal to kt divided by Q. So we can make this um, substitution and eventually we will get minus kt divided by q n naught times d delta n as a function of x over dx. <clears throat> so that is for um, electric uh, field. Now let us take first derivative of this electric field. Uh, so we will have dE x over d uh, x, like first derivative over position, and uh, this will be minus kT over q and naught. Uh, and here will be second derivative uh, of excessive concentration delta n. Uh, over dx. So it will be d 
um, square delta n x over d x square. So now we keep this in mind and we come back to Poisson's equation. We know that there is a relationship between this first derivative of electric uh, field over position and that should be equal to rho, excessive charge carrier, um, concentration, uh, like sp sp space charge divided by epsilon epsilon naught. Uh, <clears throat> or in other form, since excessive charge carriers is this delta n, which kind of diffuse into an electrically neutral part, right part of the semiconductor, not dashed on our figure, that will be uh, minus we have deal we deal with electrons so it will be minus q divided by epsilon epsilon naught times this excessive concentration as a function of x <clears throat> so um, we have expression for first derivative of electric field over position um, in terms of uh, one uh, equation and the same in terms of another equation so we can put them to, oops, together and it will be minus q over epsilon epsilon naught times delta n as a function of x um, equal to minus kt divided by q and naught second derivative delta n over dx square so from here, we can already form our differential equation, second order differential equation, delta n over dx square uh, minus q square n naught divided by epsilon epsilon naught kt uh, delta n as a function of x equals to zero. So this is um, second order differential equation and uh, we can make a substitution to um, make it a bit easier to write. Uh, so let us consider that some parameter LD uh, is equal to square root of epsilon epsilon naught times kt divided by Q square times n naught. So with this uh, substitution, it will be d square delta n over dx square minus uh, delta n. Well, we can skip this x. We don't need to write it every everywhere. Delta n divided by L D in second power. This is equal to zero. So, uh, considering boundary conditions, which will be um, x equal to zero, uh, again, it will be excessive concentration, delta n, um, delta n at position zero, uh, will be maximum, because it will be closer to the uh, closest position to the region of semiconductor where we created this excessive um, charge carriers. And at x equal some infinity, so infinitely far from this um, boundary, like this x equal to zero, um, we can consider that it is excessive concentration of these charge carriers will be equal to zero. So taking this into account, we can write <coughs> that delta n as a function of x will be equal to delta n naught, some initial uh, excessive concentration of electrons, times exponent minus x divided by Ld. Um, so here we need to consider again uh, this introduced um, parameter LD, so we remember it's equal to square root of epsilon epsilon naught kt divided by q square n naught. 
Uh, and this is so-called Dubai screening lens. So if at the uh, previous discussion we were interested in time scale, um, how long does it take to screen the uh, excessive um, uh, charge in the environment of semiconductor? And we determine that this is uh, Maxwell relaxation time, uh, tau mu. So here we show that um, what happened, what is happening with this excessive charge um, in the environment of semiconductor when we um, consider already um, the distance range. So this um, Debye screening lens is the distance at which uh, all excessive charge um, will be completely screened. And uh, I mean completely screened uh, that at x, we can write that x is uh, equal to Ld. We will have concentration, this delta n, uh, will be initial concentration, delta n naught, times exponent in the power of minus 1. So it will be uh, e times less than uh, initial concentration of charge carriers. <clears throat> so now we can find some relationship between um, Debye screening lens and Maxwell relaxation time. Obviously, they, these two should um, correlate with each other because they um, describe uh, processes of screening excessive electric charge in the environment of semiconductor. So let us write again expression for Debye um, relaxation uh, screening lens that is equal square root of epsilon epsilon naught kt divided by q square n naught so let us separate this uh, to make it more clear so it will be epsilon epsilon naught divided by q um, n naught and here will be kt divided by q. So I believe you already recognize this guy. So that um, is part of Einstein relationship. So again, kt divided by q can be expressed as the relationship between diffusion coefficient and um, mobility. So in this case, we are talking about electrons. So that's why taking this into account, we can write that it will be epsilon, epsilon naught divided by Q uh, N naught uh, times dN divided by mu N. So what do you see in the denominator? Q times N naught times mu. It's some parameter of the semiconductor. Sigma, yes, it is specific electrical conductivity. So we can write here, it will be epsilon, epsilon naught divided by sigma times dn. And this guy we also know. That is uh, Maxwell relaxation time. So we can write that the the by screening lens is equal to Maxwell relaxation time tau m times diffusion coefficient dn. <clears throat> so that is uh, at this point everything what I wanted to um, tell you about uh, charge transport before we start working. Um, with uh, on derivation of um, equations for uh, current voltage characteristic of a PN junction because prior to this derivation we need to introduce also um, diffusion of minority charge carriers in semiconductor so we could have make it uh, like discuss this right now but in order to make it probably easier for you for your understanding so it kind of stays fresh in your uh, memory, we will uh, come back to the diffusion of minority charge carriers in semiconductor right in front of derivation of uh, current voltage characteristic of PN junction, 
because um, before uh, this current voltage characteristic, we need to consider contact um, effects, uh, in particular some contact between metal and semiconductor. We will not um, focus on current voltage characteristics of metal semiconductor junction, like so-called Schottky junction, because uh, it makes more sense to derive, like to explain everything and derive these equations for uh, PN junction, where we have a uh, more general picture, but we do need to discuss some um, aspects of uh, processes which are happening at the interface between metal and semiconductor. Uh, and uh, uh, that will be actually our goal for next uh, lecture. So it's probably the first real step into um, devices because uh, we understand that any semiconductor device should possess some uh, electrical contacts. Uh, and uh, this uh, electrical contacts can be either ohmic contacts, means that they um, do not create any... Uh, uh, they possess very low resistance and have linear current voltage characteristic, or it can be um, rectifying contacts. Then we will uh, make... Uh, instead of just ohmic contact to semiconductor, we will make some metal semiconductor junction called Schottky junction. And um, this junction will possess some rectifying properties. So we will explain next time why this uh, like contact of different metals with different semiconductors behave as ohmic contacts or rectifying contacts. Um, and uh, based on um, uh, that, we will already understand the formation of some um, potential barriers um, and band bending at the interface of um, semiconductor. So that's important um, moment before we finally come to the uh, discussion of uh, PN junction, uh, formation of PN junction and its current voltage characteristic. So if you have any questions, you are welcome. If not, you can address me your questions next, next time. Thank you for your attention.